Hey, my name is Bill Jordan. I do candid beauty interviews. If you're a painter, a sculptor, or a candlestick maker, this is where you need to be. You know, people buy from people they know, and the best way for them to know you is with my candid beauty interview. That's a proven fact. How do I know? Because I said so. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so in the beginning of this clip here, I said, my name is, right? My name is Bill Jordan. What's your name? Does it really matter what your name is? A name, I guess, represents a configuration of energy, right? It could. And speaking about configurations of energy, like, how do you, how do you interface with, you know, the invisible? How do you, what, what's your technique for like knowing how to listen to the energy or feel the energy? How do you do that? Other than the fact you say that's just the way it is. Because on the level we're talking about, it's not about being, you know, casual. It's not about being just happening. It's like being conscious of it. The reason why is because you have to be, you know, if you're conscious of it, you can direct their energy. You can direct the energy intentionally, not just, you know, you know, because you feel like it. A lot of work, a lot of what people do is by feeling. Nothing wrong with that. I'm a feely person myself. However, how are you going to take the feeling energy and craft it in such a way that it gives you a particular result? And we talked about, about fortune telling, storytelling, you know, raising the, the consciousness of the planet. That's really what it's all about. You know, it goes through your food, how you can take that same consciousness and, and you call it blessing food. You can take the same consciousness and consecrate your food for your purposes, your drinks, your, your living space. You know, it's the same. There's no difference. The difference is that some of us are aware of it and some of us are not. Some of us use it and some of us don't. Okay? And I'm speaking to, to, the, to the platform, to the world, in terms of let's be more conscious of what we do. I'm not moralizing. I don't think there's it. You know, you guys over there, you, if, you, you do, if you walk on the left side of the street, and the guys over here, you walk on the right side, you know, those are sacred Sacred things for you, I respect that. That's not my point. I'm just saying, when you walk on the side of the street that you're walking on, be conscious of, of the fact that you're walking on that side of the street for a particular reason and know why. Not just because someone told you to or told you not to. Like over here in, in, the, in the US of A, when you watch the news, which I don't know why you would watch that stuff. When you watch the news, what are you really seeing? What is the process that, I mean, when I, when I, by occasion, if I have a chance to watch it, it's really uncomfortable because I, I know that they're drilling into my, my nerves and my back and just feel like controlling me. But you watch that stuff, you're mesmerized. Right? And I can see when you were seven or eight, you plopped in front of the TV and that's all you know because cowboys and Indians are on or what your favorite show is now, I don't know. But you're not seven or eight anymore. You know, you can, you can think for yourself. And I encourage you to do so. It's not going to be easy. It's not, a, it's not a comfortable job because your friends, your family, a lot of them are going to be against you because you know, you're different now. But at the same time, they will admire, admire and respect you for standing up and being who you are. And you don't have to get angry with them. When you get angry with them, that's a sign that you haven't learned. Let them get angry with you. And when that happens, what you do then, you stay calm and then you just talk to them in a nice rational tone and ask them questions like, gee, I notice that you're upset. Is there any particular reason? That's an interesting statement. Tell me more about it. All right? Tell me more about that statement, that, 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 why you're upset. And that way, you both benefit. You practice being calm, and they realize that their state of mind is really out of control. 
and when, when people got to control emotionally, they're open for, you know, um, seduction. That's why you watch the TV shows and always, you know, oh, the so-and-so guys over in, Miss in Missouri, they're, they're tearing up the town. Oh, my God. Oh, it's horrible. You know, this, this one police officer killed one guy. So what? And blah, 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 blah. So now all those boogeymen in your heads are like, you know, oh, my God. Suppose each, each side has its own boogeymen, <laughs> you know? And the boogeymen are creating the fear factor. So now, but the, once that, that's there, you have sub-channels that are, that are saying, well, you know, those, those guys break, get past the, 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 the uh, train, the, the train tracks. My God, our whole, our whole real estate system will be in, in jeopardy. We have to keep them on that side of the track. The other guy said, well, you know, man, uh, we got to get over there. and uh, We got to show those people what we mean business. We ain't taking this anymore. So each side's covering up its own, you know, retribution system, its own fear system, and they're taking care of business. They, they all both locking down. They all got their weapons out of the fear factor. And that's how it goes on. And, and it's, it's, it's part and parcel of everything. When I call you up, it's running in your heads again. Well, I don't know you. I don't want to do that. Here's a guy, man. I suppose I sent him this, you know, and you know, there's a wisdom that says it's my fault for doing this. It's my fault for them not calling. I don't think so. It's my it's my responsibility to call them, to reach out, and I, I rely on you to live up to your word. If you say you're going to, then why don't you? You see, that's that's the issue. The issue of like keeping your commitment. And now you wonder why, you wonder why, you know, there's a, there's a trust issue because you didn't trust yourself to live up to your word and, you, and that's running in your mind. There's that guilt. I got to call a guy today because I said I was going to call him and I didn't. I got to call him today. I didn't want to talk to him. I was busy. He's not adding to my plate. You know, he's just like sucking my energy. But I'm not going to leave him hanging like that because that's wrong. I said I was going to call him and I'll call him. So anyway, you know, that's my view of the, of the, of the situation. I know it's not yours. I know it's not the standard. The standard approach is to say, yes, I'm the reason why you didn't call back. I'm not taking that. You're the reason why you didn't call back because you told me you were. Why should I have to run after you and hogtie you to live up to your word? Is that what you want me to do? <laughs> I don't think so. I would want you to do that to me. Treat you like an adult. You know, as, a, as an adult, you live up to your word. You say, no, I'm not interested. You know? And, and I, you know, really, when, when, they, when the stockbrokers call me up, I tell you this all the time. When they call me up, and I'm saying that I'm not ready. I don't say I'm not interested. Well, I, I say that I'm not interested. I, and I'll say the reason why is because, you know, I'm at your target market. I don't have that kind of resource, resources to, uh, to invest. So you'd be wasting your time. I can't, I can't even make that decision because I don't have the resources required to make that investment. Right? But you, when, you, when I call you up, you have the resources. You have the time. And, and you have a need. What's your need? Well, honestly, on the global level is to you know, raise the, the planetary consciousness, but on, on your local Main Street levels to sell more work. Be so afraid of like, I might get into your mind and, you know, ask for your bank account or your, your savings account or your, your firstborn or your lungs. I don't want any of that from you. Why would I want your stuff? Well, everybody, I don't want your stuff. That's yours. It's like me walking in your shoes. Why would I want to walk in your shoes? They don't, they don't work for my body. <laughs> All right. Bill Jordan here. I'm at 201-790-3368. Peace out.